All right, so Star Runner is a fully self-contained system for using Starlink on the road. Um, it contains the Starlink terminal, and then in a box, it's got the Starlink router, power supply, uh, necessary inverters and such all in there. But the whole intention is this is a, a fully self-contained unit. You can put on your uh, RV, or you can uh, take it off and just stick it in the field and run it off of um, AC or DC. Uh, my expectation on my Storyteller Overland van is that running on the roof, um, I'm going to run off of a DC source that's up there. Uh, and then if I need to take it down because the van's parked somewhere where there's obstructions, I'm able to just run it off of AC, just running an AC right off the side of the van as well. Um, so really, there's just a few components. Uh, the first part is the star mount systems uh, flat panel uh, unit. And basically what you do is take your consumer home Starlink terminal and have to cut it out, take just the panel out, and you put it into this enclosure. Uh, star mount systems also allows you to send the unit to them and they'll do the whole packaging uh, for you. And then down below, I used a um, front runner Wolfpack uh, Pro box. And the reason for using that is really the same part. The uh, Storyteller Overland van comes with a uh, front runner rack, so this can just mount straight up on it. Um, the connectors on the side are just a, a simple set. Uh, first, a, a DC in, and again, when I'm running it on the roof, I'll run it off of uh, DC typically. Um, then is just a grommet system uh, for running out the standard Starlink cable. And really, it's the, the standard Starlink cable is just in the box. And then finally, a port for running uh, straight off of AC. So you can just run an extension cord right over he to here. Um, in the box and in the design, you'll see that I used a transfer switch. You, you could choose to not use that. Um, the transfer switch is really going to just offer protection if someone were to run DC and AC at the same time. Um, you'll, you'll avoid any problems. So in this case, uh, if both are run to it, if AC is run to this, it'll just run off of the AC and ignore the DC side of it. Um, also for the Storyteller Overland, uh, there's a DC source on top. So just using the uh, Deutsche connector that's used for the top of the van. Um, Storyteller has a switched port up top um, they call aux one that can offer up to 20 amps, which will be sufficient to run this. And then I just made the, the custom cable with the mating uh, connector on the other side. So um, next we'll just kind of walk through some of the options for uh, how it's used uh, both on the, star, or on, on the van and also uh, out in the field. First, let's look at all the components. On the left, you'll see that we have a, the ACN and the DCN connectors. Uh, the DCN flows to an inverter, which then connects to a transfer switch. And the transfer switch can decide whether um, AC power is going to be used or the DC power coming off of the inverter. If the AC power is there, it's going to use the AC. And then that powers the Starlink router. Putting this all together, you can see the connectors coming in on the left the inverters down at the bottom with the transfer switch just above it. And then over there on the right is the Starlink router. SpaceX didn't design the router to be mounted, so I ended up just drilling a couple holes through the edge of the case and putting a couple screws through there. It seems to hold it really well when positioned against the case. The final component to add to the case is the cable that goes between the router and the Starlink. Um, I chose not to cut this to length simply because it would just be one more connector into the system and it really wasn't necessary. Uh, the cable might cause some problems for Wi-Fi, but I'm going to just try this out and see how it goes. All right, this is all closed up now. You can see the final cable going from the box into the Starlink. Starlink installed on top and the gland seal fully in place so that now it is all watertight and ready to go on the van. All right, this is all installed on the van. The case is just mounted with the standard Wolfpack mounting kit from Front Runner that uh, comes along with the case designed to mount on the Front Runner rack. And then you just see the DC cable uh, running to where the Storyteller Overland van has DC available at the roof. 
All right, so I took this out in the wild to give it a try. Um, you can see I'm in an area that's largely unobstructed. And generally in North America uh, with Starlink, as long as you're unobstructed to the north, you'll have pretty good service. Obviously, you can go to the app and confirm whether there's obstructions in the way or not. Turning Star Runner on is really easy in the Storyteller because I wired it up to the roof. I just have to click on the AUX1 on, and that will power it up. It all comes down to how well is this all going to work on the road. Uh, SpaceX has a great app for testing the overall service, uh, checking for obstructions and such. Um, so running this here, you can see I'm getting over 20 megabit per second which is more than sufficient to do any work that I need to do. Um, if I were to run this again and again, uh, you'd see some numbers jumping all over. It's a common piece with uh, Starlink. Uh, the numbers kind of bounce around. SpaceX does have uh, this advanced test uh, that allows you to look at the speed that the router would get directly to the internet and then the speed that your phone can get to the router presumably being that um, you'll be able to see where any bottlenecks might be, specifically if the Wi-Fi is, is holding anything back. Um, as you'll see it coming out of the results of this, um, both the router speed to the internet and the Wi-Fi speed to the router, both are well above the 20 that I just got. And I think that's really common as you run these. So I think statistically over time, you can get some value out of all of this. But um, if you look at any single time, you know, I wouldn't lock uh, my, my full expectation of the overall service to what I see, you know, coming out of this test uh, running at one time. But overall, this is more than sufficient to work, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to work remotely out of the van uh, using Starlink. So I'm, I'm really happy with the performance. As far as how much power this is using, the Storyteller van has uh, a Volta power system that's able to tell me how much power is being consumed uh, while things are operating. So while I have the Starlink on, I'm burning 100 watts, but I actually have other things running. And when I turn off the Starlink, you can see that I drop down to about 42 watts. Um, so the Starlink is running at about 60 watts um, and while it's in a steady state, not in snow melt mode and such, which seems very reasonable for the, the type of system it is. Of course, you're able to take Star Runner off of the van in order to avoid any areas where the van location might be obstructed. So on the Storyteller, there is uh, AC power available uh, on the side of the van. Uh, you just have to turn on the inverter in the van and uh, you can place the Star Runner wherever you can uh, obtain an un unobstructed view of the sky. Uh, this also allows you to just really take uh, Starlink capability anywhere you need it. As long as there's power there, you can have internet available. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And if you need any more information, all of the details are available in GitHub uh, at the URL on the screen. I'll also list that in the uh, um, video information.